Hello everybody, this is Kirby Over Yonder and Futurama. Created by many of the same genius minds behind The Simpsons, Futurama is one of my favorite shows of all time. It has just about everything I'd want in a TV show. Fantastic comedy, really well-written sci-fi stories, a well-rounded and likable cast of characters, genuinely heartfelt and emotional moments, Zoidberg, this may be a very unpopular opinion, but I think I actually like Futurama just a little bit more than The Simpsons. I mean, no duh, only a third of The Simpsons is actually good. But even if we're comparing the best of The Simpsons to the best of Futurama, I think I still like Futurama just a little bit more. Don't get me wrong, both shows would be in my top 10 favorite cartoons of all time, and The Simpsons is probably objectively just as good, if not better, than Futurama. I think I just personally prefer Futurama's science fiction elements over whatever the hell that is. But what is the best of Futurama? Well, let's find out right now with my top 10 favorite Futurama episodes. My only rule for this list is that I'm not allowed to include any of the four movies. Though trust me, if I were, Bender's Big Score would easily make the top three. The rest of them are just okay. And number 10, we have Space Pilot 3000. Really, what better way to start is there than with the start of the show? But honestly, this is one of the best pilots to any show I've ever seen. It introduces us to the characters and this world perfectly. We understand that Fry is a not too bright but genuinely nice guy who's just down on his luck and wants more out of his life. That Bender is a cold and cynical robot, but still loves partying, and has at least some level of kindness deep down inside. And that Leela is an alien that is definitely strict and responsible, but is also charmed by Fry's naivete. The episode mostly centers around this chase between Fry and Leela. And through said chase, the episode does a great job getting us acquainted with the world of Futurama. In this episode alone, we get to see so many different locations. It helps make the world of Futurama feel very grand and expansive, while still leaving room to grow. And there's some genuine emotion in there too, you really feel bad for Fry, since he'll never be able to see his old friends and family again. I like that the episode doesn't just gloss over this, but it also doesn't bring down the episode too much. It's a perfect pilot episode, and a great way to introduce anyone to Futurama. At number 9, we have Game of Tones. When an alien spaceship starts blasting a tone that Fry recognizes, he has to go in his dreams back to the day he got frozen to find out what it is. The episode explores the relationship Fry had with his family, specifically his mom. Like I said before, Fry never really got to say goodbye to his family, so seeing Fry get to spend a little more time with them is pretty fun, but also sort of sad. There's also something very novel about getting to see the Planet Express crew interact with Fry's family. And you feel really bad for Fry when he eventually has to leave them. It's like he's being taken away from his family all over again. Anyways, we get a bunch of fun references to the pilot episode, and eventually Fry hears the tone from before. The actual explanation for it is honestly pretty stupid, but also kind of funny. And as a reward, Nibbler allows Fry to go into his mother's dream to talk to her one last time. And the moment they share together is one of my favorite scenes in the entire show. It just feels so real and genuine that instead of talking to his mom, Fry just hugs her. It's just such a beautiful moment and it helps make Game of Tones one of my favorite episodes from the Comedy Central era. Also, it has a Family Guy reference. I love Family Guy. At number 8, we have Jurassic Bark. I'm sure most of you are surprised Jurassic Bark is this early on the list. Well, here's the thing. I feel like most people love Jurassic Bark for this scene here at the end. And don't get me wrong, it's an absolutely phenomenal scene, but I feel like I've seen it reposted so many times that it's kinda lost a bit of its impact for me. Not that it doesn't make me feel anything at all, I've just become a little numb to it. But of course, Jurassic Bark is still a top-tier episode. Any episode focusing on Fry's past is just bound to be heartbreaking, and his relationship with Seymour is very sweet. 
I really like Bender's arc in this one, and I feel as though it doesn't get the love it deserves. He can definitely be very cruel and insensitive in this one, but it's really satisfying to see him pull through in the end, it's a very great moment for his character. And even if that finale doesn't hit me quite as hard in the feels as it used to, it's still an incredible scene. Made even more sad combined with the dramatic irony that Fry thinks that Seymour lived a full life, but in reality he just spent 12 years waiting for Fry to come back. I admit, it's kinda hard for me to talk about Jurassic Bark. I feel like everyone kind of already knows about why it's so great. It's an episode that just about everybody's already talked about. This list just wouldn't feel complete without it. At number 7, we have the series finale, Meanwhile. In this episode, Fry uses a time machine that can only go back 10 seconds in the past to find the perfect wedding ring for Leela. This causes Fry's watch to be about half an hour off, leading him to think that Leela stood him up. So, Fry attempts to commit suicide. Fry eventually realizes his mistake and tries to go back to before he jumped, but unfortunately he was falling for too long, and is now stuck in an infinite loop, meaning that Fry is cursed to experience the view from halfway down forever. There's something very morbidly funny about watching Fry fall to his death so many times. We even see him get killed a few times, it's pretty gruesome. They eventually find a way out of it. However, Fry accidentally breaks the button, causing everything that's up for him and Leela to freeze. And this is when the episode really gets good. Fry and Leela decide to spend their honeymoon with time frozen. It's a very serene experience watching Fry and Leela spend all of their time together with time frozen. I admit, the episode isn't all that funny and there isn't even that much dialogue during this portion of the episode. But it's just such a satisfying experience watching Fry and Leela spend their lives together with no sort of conflict or drama and with nice music to accompany them. With the one exception being this mysterious white flash that keeps appearing every so often. Well, we later find out that it was actually Farn's work, he presents a way for time to go back to how it was before Fry broke the button. However, Fry and Leela wouldn't remember any of the time they spent together. Fry and Leela agree to it, ending the series on a very bittersweet note. What an excellent finale. At number 6, we have the, um, other series finale. The Devil's Hands Are Idle Playthings. Well, this is the finale for the original run of Futurama specifically. Technically, Futurama actually has four different finales, but this and Meanwhile are really the only ones that feel worthy of being a finale to me. And while I think Meanwhile is a slightly better finale, I think I like The Devil's Hand slightly more as an episode of Futurama. In it, Fry trades his hands with the robot devils in order to be good at playing the holophoner to impress Leela. First off, the robot devil is actually one of my favorite minor characters in Futurama. Dan Castellaneta does an amazing job voicing him, and he's sort of that pathetic, jerky kind of evil that I always find to be really fun in the villain. I wish we got to see more of him throughout the series, he's a fun character. It's also great to see Fry genuinely talented at something. Sure, he's using the devil's hands, but the thoughts he's expressing are his own. He just needs the devil's hands to articulate them. But much like with Meanwhile, where this episode really gets good is in its final act. You see, Bender also makes a deal with the devil, hiding his crotch plate for a built-in stadium horn, and accidentally deafens Leela, meaning that she won't be able to hear Fry's opera. On a side note, I'm not sure why exactly, but I really like the visuals for Fry's opera. About halfway through, Leela decides that she'll trade her hand for her ability to hear. Little did she know, he meant her hand in marriage. The episode becomes this big musical that's equal parts funny and intense, and also sounds genuinely really good. Fry has to choose between his ability to play the holophoner and Leela. He obviously chooses Leela, but without the devil's hand, sucks at playing the holophoner. And the final scene of this episode is one of my favorite scenes in the entire show, where Leela stays to see the ending even though everyone else walked out. And even if Fry's son isn't objectively very good, there's still something just so beautiful about it. Honestly, if this was the finale of Futurama, I wouldn't really have a problem with that, because it's a perfect episode. At number 5, we have the Farnsworth Parabots. 
Now this episode is just a ton of fun. In it, Farnsworth accidentally creates a bot containing an alternate universe. And after a few mishaps, Leela goes inside. As it turns out, it's almost exactly the same as the universe we're used to, except coin flips have the opposite outcome. I'm a big sucker for episodes of shows that deal with alternate universes, there's just something so fun about it. I love how slightly different everything is, and how the characters manage to make such a big deal over it. We even learn that this version of Fry and Leela are actually married. But of course, we get two Zoidbergs in this episode. Two Zoidbergs. Now, one Zoidberg on his own is already incredible, but two? But the best part of this episode is easily its climax. Our Hermes is on his way to destroy the bots, not knowing that it contains an alternate universe. Meanwhile, in the alternate universe, the bots containing our universe is lost amongst a sea of other bots containing alternate universes. So the game must go inside each and every one to find the correct universe. We get to see a bunch of different alternate universes, and it's a ton of fun. You can tell that the crew had a great time creating these. Also, this joke right here is amazing and gets me every time. It's overall one of the most creative and entertaining episodes in the series. At number 4, we have Time Keeps On Slipping. In this episode, the crew is challenged at a completely high-stakes game of basketball with the Harlem Globetrotters. They plan to beat them using Atomic Superman, with the only problem being that they're not fully grown yet. So the crew collects time particles known as chronotons to speed up their aging process. However, this causes time to skip at seemingly random intervals. Much like with alternate universes, stories that mess with our perception of time are also among my favorites. The constant time skips makes for both a great storytelling and some of the funniest moments in the entire series. But at the same time, this is another episode where Fry is trying to get with Leela. I'm actually just now starting to realize just how many Fry and Leela episodes I put on this list. Like, this isn't even the last one. At one point, we skip to Fry and Leela getting married. But because of the time jump, we don't actually know how Fry convinced Leela to go out with him. From then on, the episode sorta of becomes a mystery as to how Fry and Leela were able to get married. You sorta of feel bad for Fry since you know that he's just so close to getting Leela to be interested in him. He just needs to figure out what did it. But at least he still has Zoidberg. You all still have Zoidberg. Around the end of the episode, Fry, Leela, and Bender go into space to destroy the chronotons and stop the skipping. That's when we see this. Fry moved the stars themselves to give Leela a love message, and that's what convinced her to marry him. But unfortunately, it blows up before Leela can see it, making for a very melancholic ending to a fantastic episode. At number 3, we have the late Philip J. Fry. In this episode, Fry, Bender, and Farnsworth plan to test out the Professor's time machine by only going a minute into the future, but end up going about 7,000 years into the future by accident. And since the time machine only travels forward, there's no way to get back. This causes Fry to not only miss a date with Leela, but also miss the entire rest of her existence. Since the crew is constantly traveling forwards in the future, we get a bunch of unique and different looking locations and characters. Meanwhile, we're constantly getting glimpses of the future of Leela and the rest of Planet Express. You'd think she'd be happy as the owner of Planet Express, but without Fry, it's just not quite the same. Later on, Leela goes back to the cavern on the greens where she originally thought Fry stood her up to carve a message. We then see said message from Fry's perspective millions of years in the future, and it's one of the most bittersweet moments in the series. Afterwards, in a very existential scene, the crew watches the universe end. But then, a second Big Bang happens, creating a whole new universe identical to the old one. Thus, the crew is able to just slip themselves back in, killing their new selves in the process. A very disturbing ending for sure, but also take that Rick and Morty, Futurama did it first. Even if the Comedy Central run of Futurama isn't quite as good as the Fox run, episodes like this, Game of Tones, and Meanwhile shows that there was still a ton of talent behind the Futurama team. At number 2, we have The Sting. In this episode, Frybender and Leela are sent to a giant honeycomb filled with killer bees to collect honey. 
They managed to retrieve the honey unharmed, however, Leela brought a baby bee onto the ship with them, the bee stains Fry ultimately killing him. Leela obviously feels guilty about this because she was the one who brought the killer bee on the ship in the first place. However, Fry keeps showing up in Leela's dreams, causing her to believe that Fry is still alive. As the episode goes on, we continue to see Leela being driven more and more insane. There's some amazing dreamlike visuals in this episode, and even some genuinely sweet moments between Fry and Leela, even if it is all just a dream. However, the more this drives Leela insane, the more trippy the visuals get. At one point, she even imagines a whole musical number, complete with characters blowing up and all. It almost feels like one of those drug trip episodes of Bojack, what with how insane the visuals get. And seeing Leela continually become more and more detached from reality makes it genuinely one of the most disturbing episodes of the show. Then we get the reveal that the whole thing was a dream and that Leela was in a coma the entire time. Now, if you haven't seen this episode before, I know what you're thinking. And yes, generally speaking, I hate the it's just a dream cliche too. However, I actually think it works really well here. First off, it makes sense that the stinger would have gone straight through Fry, thus giving Leela all of the poison. It doesn't feel contrived and there are no plot holes. Second, most of the audience knows that something is up from the beginning. The show wouldn't just kill off Fry, and if they did, they wouldn't do it like this. So the twist doesn't feel like it just comes out of nowhere. Heck, we even get clever foreshadowing to this, with Fry constantly telling Leela to wake up. And most importantly, there were still consequences to Leela's actions. The main reason why a lot of people hate the it's just a dream cliche is because it's usually just a cheap and easy way to get the characters out of conflict and it makes the audience feel like nothing they watched actually mattered. But here, Leela still has to deal with the consequences of bringing the killer bee onto the ship. It's just that those consequences are different from the consequences we thought she was facing. And the story still matters because it shows just how strong the relationship between Fry and Leela is. And man, that ending gets me every time. To see this after watching everything Leela went through makes it one of the most satisfying moments of the entire show. It's a perfect episode that's only beaten by one, and you probably know what it is. And my number one favorite Futurama episode is Luck of the Fryrish. I'm gonna be honest, I've known this episode is my favorite for a while now, but up until recently, I wasn't exactly sure why. I mean, I've always known why I like the episode, I just wasn't sure why it was my favorite. And for that reason, I almost put the stain at number one and this at number two. But I think I've got it now. In it, Fry is experiencing an abnormal amount of bad luck. So he attempts to track down his lucky clover from before he came to the future. So it's another episode that deals with Fry's past, which is always great. Specifically, it showcases Fry's relationship with his brother Yancey, which we don't get to see a whole lot of. It also makes for a very fun mystery as to what happened to Fry's clover. It's really cool seeing Fry, Bender, and Leela explore old New York and Fry's old home. But again, those are reasons why I like the episode, but those aren't the reasons why it's my favorite episode. The reason why Luck of the Fryrush is my favorite Futurama episode is the way the story subverts your expectations. Throughout the entire episode, we are set up to believe that Yancey stole Fry's name and his clover. This is what Fry believes, and this is what we, the audience, believe. So the reveal that he not only didn't steal Fry's identity, but missed Fry so much after he left that he named his son after him and gave him the clover hits really hard. And keep in mind, this came before episodes like Jurassic Park and Game of Tones. At this point in the series, we had no idea that anyone from Fry's past actually missed him. But while those episodes definitely hit you in the feels as well, this episode gets extra points for being the first. And man, that moment where Fry tearfully gives his clover back to his deceased nephew while Don't You Forget About Me plays in the background, it's probably my favorite moment in the series. Luck of the Fryrush combines everything I love about Futurama to create what in my opinion is a perfect episode. 
one of my favorite television episodes of all time. Herbie? Ow. 